All right, welcome back and thank you for staying with us. It's now time for the newspaper review. Let's take a look at what the front pages of the national dailies are saying. Let's begin with Daily Trust newspaper. And we have the lead story here that talks about Boko Haram kills 35 fishermen in Borno. And uh, writers here say terrorists tie them in net, spray them with bullets, says locals. We are sad, Dikwa Emir. Uh, government in talks with security operatives says Zulum and you can find details of that story of on page uh, four but then there's also a Victoria of the Shehu of Dikwa uh, Haji Ibrahim Ibn Omar Ibrahim El Kanemi during a condolence visit to families of fishermen killed by Boko Haram in Borno State uh, let's move on to more stories from the top of the page Nigeria records 1.2 trillion naira surplus as foreign trade hits 52.38 trillion naira in 2022. We also have election postponement, voters, parties express mixed reactions. We also have a shippers council, fan, others call low on ease of doing business compliance. Now, uh, from the bottom of the page, there we have six killed, scores injured as train crushes BRT in Lagos. Buhari, Gwajabi, Amila, Sangolu, Morn, and train passengers worried over rising accidents. We also have federal government begins probe. You can find details of that story on page five. More stories, INET kicks as court okays to, to use temporary voter card for voting. Uh, IWD, that's International Women's Day, Ja is back to establish all women wing. Details on page 21. And we have Kogi Boy trying to arrest thieves on Yam Farm, hacked to death. A really sad one there. And uh, these are some of the stories on Daily Trust newspaper. Moving on to the Nation newspaper this morning, it's leading with the headline Tinibu's pledge to Nigerians. I will not disappoint you. My certificate of return is a World Cup trophy, President-elect says, in Lagos. Uh, you'll find the President-elect there uh, with um, various um, uh, the, uh, orbers, as, as they are known in Lagos, uh, in a photo shoot alongside the governor of Lagos. Nigeria's debt hit $50 trillion. Um, and to other stories, parties realign ahead of Saturday's polls. Obey Supreme Court judgment on Naira now, legal giants tell Buhari. And PDP leaders to picket INEC office over polls mm. resort. Rainstorms destroy 105 houses in a kitty. And to other stories there, Masha becomes US-based G24 director. And farmers unite for APC governors. These are the major stories on the front page of the Nation newspaper this morning. All right, uh, let's take a look at uh, Blueprint newspaper. We have the lead story here that uh, says uh, controversies over February, February 25 polls. Uh, Buhari opens up, says there won't be another June 12th. And uh, we also have a writer here that says, assures Tinubu will be sworn in in May 29. Protect integrity of data from beavers, APC tells INEC. And you can find details of that story on page 6. Uh, from top of the page there, we have Lagos train BRT crash. Death toll rises to 6. Sangwo Lu suspense campaign. Declares three days mourning, Tinubu Bajabi Amila Jando Mourn, driver of ill-fitted BRT in our custody, says police. Uh, on page 9, we have NSCDC arraigns man for defrauding sex worker in Ondo State. And uh, 10th NAS, group favors North Central for president of Senate. We have more stories on the bottom of the page there. Women play crucial roles in Dongote Group's success story, Dongote's daughter. March eight, March 18, we haven't seen court judgment allowing use of TVC's INEC. And then uh, we have Kanu to sack lawyer over poor representation, orders IPOP to stop media attacks. And these are some of the stories on Blueprint newspaper. 
Okay, moving on to the Nigerian Tribune, leading with the incidents from Lagos. Six die, 70 injured in train. Lagos government staff bus coalition. Um, Sawalu declares three days mourning, calls for blood donation. Driver undergoes psychiatric drug test, remanded in custody. We warned driver before he crossed the rail line. Victims narrate OVU. An FG calls for investigation. Buari Tinibu Bajabia Miller, governor's mourn. You'll find the details of this on page four and five. Of course, you also have um, pictures there of the various uh, scenes uh, of the incidents yesterday in Lagos and um, the visit of the governor as well as the hospital ward where most of the victims were hospitalized. Ten die in Oyo Bomosho Road accident and court orders INEC to allow two voters to use temporary voters card in March 18 polls. Nadeko has no branch in the U.S. Okpadoku attacks Tinibu on ensuring federal constitutional governance and one killed 15 injured as APC PDP supporters clash in Bauchi. These are the major stories on the front page of the Nigerian Tribune. All right, let's take a look at Punch next. Uh, the lead story talks about uh, the Lagos train bus crash, uh, bus crash, and then uh, let's uh, move on to more stories. Uh, at the top of the page, there, INEC folds judgment permitting temporary voter cards for polls. We have NCAA probes Lufthansa over alleged passengers' maltreatment. Uh, visa revocation. Court bars CEO from running Seplet. And uh, besides the nameplate there, on roadblock. Victims tackle lawless soldiers over extortion and harassment. And these are some of the stories on the punch. Moving on to The Guardian this morning. Polls shift may cost Nigeria more than $2.23 billion suffered in 2019. Postponement compounds Naira fuel scarcity woes, SBM intelligence, um, presidency. Why worry is quiet over allegation of irregularities against INEC. March 18 polls, excuses no longer acceptable. IPAC cautions INEC. Aburi, INEC has eroded our confidence. Protect integrity of VITA from beavers, APC tells INEC. And INEC kicks as court orders commission to allow two Nigerians vote without PVC. And of course, you also have the photos from yesterday's unfortunate incidents involving the train and the metro bus. Uh, on the front page there. Two other stories, Black Thursday, 21 die in road crash in Lagos, Enugu. And pilot's training fee hits 20 million as in cuts. ICA increases tuition and governorship election and lessons of the postponement. Uh, that's an editorial and you'll find that on page 12. And there's a strip down there uh, below the pictures, one week after Supreme Court ruling, CBN silence stokes confusion. That you'll find on page six. These are the major stories on the front page of The Guardian. All right, let's take a look at Business Day newspaper. INEC flopped, INEC flop spurs tech industry into action. We also have Cash Crunch, Fuel Scarcity Bites Hada in Abuja. Currency risk dolls investor interest in Nigeria's energy transition plan. Pricey kidney care leaves poor Nigerians in a fix. And we also have Nigerians uh, oil output hits 13 month high of 1.3 million barrels per day. And these are some of the stories on business day. And to uh, last paper here on display would be first news newspaper it stays with tinibu's victory tinibu's victory sacrosanct presidency tells pdp lp others again advises aggrieved opposition parties to go to court rules out annulment of electronic of election results it says buhari refused to react to any criticism by wishful thinkers and to other stories tinibu sympathizes with the Kedja train crash victims Dogara endorses PDP Sadiq Abubakar for Bauchi's Guba poll. And how troop foiled terrorist dogs attempt to disrupt polls and defense headquarters. And court remands ex emo deputy governor in prison. To other stories, governorship polls, court order INEC to allow use of temporary voters card. AP court reserves judgment in PDP's case against Tinibu Shatima APC. 
and FC, F, federal government ordered the investigation uh, investigation bureau to probe train crash. These are some of the major stories on the front page of First News newspaper. All right, well, with that, uh, we're done reading out uh, the stories on the front page of the dailies, the national dailies, and uh, we have our guest in the studio, Nuruddin Abdullah. He's the editor of 21st uh, Century Chronicles, uh, and he's actually here with us to analyze some of these stories. Good morning, and thank you for joining us. Good morning, thank you. For always joining us, we appreciate your time. <laughs> yeah. All right, so uh, well, uh, let's begin on a sad note, uh, talking about uh, the lead story on Daily Trust newspaper that talks about uh, Boko Haram killing 35 fishermen in Borno State, and uh, locals actually said they tied them in their own fishing nets and then, you know, uh, sprayed them with bullets. Really that sad one. Really there. tragic. A tragic in the sense that. <coughs> Excuse me. You know, um, it has been long since we had uh, such uh, sad stories, particularly with the apparent uh, degradation of the um, terrorists. But uh, stories like this, you know, means uh, a lot need to be done, particularly on the um, incidents. If you put this side by side with what happened in the Nigeria Republic not long ago, you know, some of their soldiers were captured and brutally murdered, you know, and the terrorists even shared uh, footage. So it means that uh, there are still some elements of uh, Boko Haram Israel along the like, Chad uh, Basin. And the security agencies need to really uh, galvanize troops and maybe finish this job once and for all. Because, you know, 35 is a very big number. Mm -hmm. It's been long since we have something uh, like this again. I can understand the troops, you know, the DHQ is deploying troops to the other side of the country particularly the northwest and part of the north central because of the banditry. And if you take this and see what happened in Kaduna yesterday, in Niger day before yesterday, it means that uh, something really needs to be done and very quickly. Because you see what happened in Niger, about 50 abducted. This is one of the largest numbers in the last couple of months. In Kaduna, the community was attacked, I remember. So there are some pockets of uh, the bandits are regrouping and launching attacks and the Boko Haram as well. You know, we thought that their capabilities were totally degraded, but now, you know, they have this uh, capability to launch this attack on soft target like these people are IDPs for heaven's sake. IDPs, fishing. You know. They have already been traumatized, sent out of their villages and towns for years and now still so it's a very serious uh, matter and i hope the appropriate authorities will take uh, appropriate action so that this thing will not be a recurring this um people would say that um, you know uh, which is a right um, a positive comment by the way that uh, the Bruno state government had done well to have returned these people to their board uh, but with attacks like this, uh, one begins to question whether it was the right time, you know, to have taken them back, given that, like you said, there are still leftovers of these people, especially around the Lake Chad uh, Basin. Uh, that's on the one hand. On, on the second, you talked about wiping this off. Some part of the Lake Chad extend beyond the Nigerian shore. Um, should, isn't it enough, I mean, uh, time that we also see an inter- uh, how would I call it, a, a regional arrangement, you know, sort of with um, uh, the Lake Chad and even the Nigeria Republic. Because the last time we had a major onslaught around the, the place was with the late uh, Chadian president leading uh, the troop in, in, an, in an affront against these people. What do we need to do to properly, because if you must relocate them, these people for centuries have always had their major livelihood around fishing somehow they will still have to get back to the same place if they must survive. What, what can we do really? 
uh, in this regard. I think um, relocating them is not just enough. And you remember uh, some years back, particularly when the Chadians came, you know, they were clearing Boko Haram. But they can't hold forth on those territories. And unfortunately, by the time they move, Boko Haram will return because the police. Actually, when uh, a territory is cleared of the terrorists, there should be semblance of authorities around that area. But in our own case, there is almost zero presence of such a people. Mm. So if you return Boko Haram in IDPs to Mafa, for instance, Kalabalgi or what have you, and Gamborangala, and there are no security agencies there, you are still exposing them. Because these terrorists can still come back and inflict mortal damage, mm -hmm. like they did here, you know, and, 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 and flee. And that is one. So I think maybe um, apart from rebuilding their burned, deserted villages and towns, maybe the Borno State government has to equally look at the idea of security. I know before they relocate them back, mm -hmm. they have to get security guarantees from the appropriate authorities. That's for sure. So I think maybe they have to up the ante in that uh, regard. Mm -hmm. And on the second leg of your um, question, here we do have, there is a multinational joint task force uh, headquartered in Jemina, mm -hmm. in, Ch in Chad, mm -hmm. you understand. We are Nigeria, Cameroon, and, and Chad, you know, we come through. So most of, the, uh, most of the commanders are even from Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So I think maybe there is need to, maybe our security forces have slacked down, thinking that maybe uh, with the infighting between ISWAP mm -hmm. factions mm -hmm. and Boko Haram, like we had last week, the security agencies are telling us that hundreds of Boko Haram were slaughtered by the uh, Hida to cameras, mm -hmm. the ISWAP uh, terrorists. So I think it's a good opportunity to utilize the infighting among the terrorists and finish them off. Mm -hmm. Else, things like this will continue to happen right. even though we don't pray for it. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, now uh, still talking about, you know, uh, deaths, uh, the six that were killed and scores injured even as uh, the train crashed, uh, uh, crushes BRT in Lagos. It seems like a reoccurrence, you know, with what actually happened in Abuja. But in this case, you know, this uh, particular driver had so many people in his car and you know, even after he knew that the train was closed, he still thought he could beat, you know, the train. And look at how it ended. I think two issues are fundamental to the story here. One, you have to know the mental health of the people you employ as drivers. Mm. That is one. It's very fundamental. Very important. Because from the stories, it said that the driver was being stopped, but he thought so, you know, he preferred speed rather than safety. Mm. You, 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 you understand? The place was barricaded, but he still think it's a moving trend. Mm. If he's alone, he's understandable. Maybe he want to commit suicide or mm. But with people inside, people. not a salon, but there are BRT boss. Yeah. And look at what even some of the survivors are saying. They were telling him to stop. So fundamentally, all state governments, even the federal government, they have to be subjecting their drivers to mental health checks periodically. Are they into drugs? Mm. Because as a driver, the first, the only thing is about safety. Mm. But when you throw away safety majors and accept in sp speed on what if you want to go there early go starting time mm. you, understand? you have been in um, Lagos um, it's like a second or a third home for you for a lot of things you, we've seen how reckless these public transport drivers can be yeah. and uh, you, you said something that was instructive we remember when they were introducing these buses, the government were busy promising the reckless drivers that we want to stop you so that we can give you better cars. If, if it is just about moving people from 
the smaller reckless uh, vehicles they were using into bigger ones and entrusting more lives into their care, uh, then something is fundamentally wrong with that recruitment uh, process. Us driving across other parts of the world are noble jobs. They are not, they are not for every term uh, they can hurry. What, what can we do to, to clean that space? Because this is it's becoming a recurring decimal. I think I mean, we neglect it. We hire, even at our family levels, mm. we don't do background check because we pay them pittance. Mm. Not even talk of mental health. You employ a driver that will come and be teaching your teenage kids how to smoke. You don't even know because mm. it's a lot of them. So attention, particularly the Lagos state government, attention must be paid to that sector. You remember the case there are some BRT drivers that are now being prosecuted mm. for assaulting, sexually assaulting, allegedly assaulting their passengers. Yes. So it means that a lot is wrong with the recruitment process. The right people are not being recruited. You understand? It's a public service. So enough care should be taken. But unfortunately, like you said now, the agueros, to use that word, mm. that have been doing the all way, are now giving BRT. Mm. So you are transparent the problem and subjecting the lives of people into serious danger. Look at what happened yesterday. He must have been under the influence of something. Possibly. You understand? They were telling him, stop, stop. No, mm. he did not. So I think maybe state governments, particularly locals, should take into consideration the types of drivers they have, particularly for this BRT, and even the licensing process. The licensing process has been abused seriously across the country. Is it the Russian city that has given the driver of license the or the VIO? That confusion is still there. Mm -hmm. So I think maybe if we get that act correct and right, maybe we can minimally, um, drastically reduce some of these uh, ugly incidents. Mm -hmm. And without, uh, just before we say that, takes this surgery. The same thing has to happen to the truck drivers. Yeah. We, are, we are beginning to see, you know, they don't pay attention to traffic stops. They don't even see other road users as road users, especially if it's a smaller vehicle versus there. They practically will want to squeeze you against the, barricade, uh, the barricades. And, and when you succeed in going past them and look through your window to see the kind of people driving, you see kids of somewhere between 18 and 25 handed those kind of responsibility, carrying highly flammable uh, uh, contents, driving recklessly on our, on our road. And sometimes you even get the impression that these people are bigger than the law because once the traffic waters attempt to even stop them, they use the same vehicle to barricade the road and cause serious uh, commotion on, on, on the road. It's, sometimes it feels like our government has completely given up on those set of people. Yes, because uh, I think it's a two-way problem. They have leadership. The appropriate authorities should engage with the leadership of these drivers. They can be trailers, they can be tanker drivers, the tanker drivers and, and even tipper drivers inside the metropolis. Nobody's. They can badge your car. If you are lucky, you catch him. If not, that's yeah, the end. You, you, you understand? So I think enough needs to be done. They have leadership. If they are too, too reckless, for instance, I don't see any why still going to make cannot ban them. Mm. Maybe from the cities for some hours and 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 and, and what if you? But unfortunately, like the other sectors, you know, the laws are not being respected. That's why there are loopholes. With small amount of money, they can get, they can go off the hook. Mm. You know, so. It's, it's actually a series of issues that we have to look into and begin to amend them to gradually so that we know we can reduce the madness on the highways. All right, well, just before we move on to other stories, let's, since we're still talking about, you know, uh, crime and all that, let's take a look at the City and Crime page on Daily Trust newspaper. We have some very interesting stories here. Uh, we have woman sues hobby for denying her conjugal rights, says marriage not only about food. Uh, we also have uh, a pictorial of some PVCs, ballot papers, and other items recovered by soldiers from a private apartment 
at Olodi area of Lagos. Now, politicians collected our account numbers without paying. Niger voters cry out. We have a man approaches court, says the wife abandoned him for 12 years. Soldiers raid kidnappers, then rescue commissioner in Cross Rivers. Uh, so many stories here. We have court grants nursing mother and brother bail over stolen phone. We also have uh, FCTA distributes gadgets to security agencies. Uh, I never intended killing my girlfriend, Chinese, tells court. Uh, this is the kind of story. And I will just take one more. Kogi boy trying to arrest thieves on yam farm hacked to death. And these are some of the stories on City and Crime page. If you want to have, uh, if you want to know, have details of more of these stories, you can actually grab a copy of Daily Trust newspaper. So, Mr. Nuruddin. So the last story you mentioned, they're very yes. even tragic, you know. Exactly. The boy wants to protect their hard work. So maybe the months of her hard work now. Mm. And that said and gruesomely murdered him, so unfortunate. And I hope they will be arrested and subjected to the full wrath of the law. Mm. You know, there are so many court cases. This one is talking about the woman is saying marriage is not all about food. <laughs> 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 and she's <it's> true. <laughs> uh, she said she's right. <laughs> Marriage is not about food. The other one is complaining that the woman has abandoned him for yes. 12 years. It simply means that she's no longer interested in the marriage. Mm. Not by force. <laughs> <laughs> My man shall not live by bread alone. Yeah. And the Niger story is more, it looks more interesting. Yeah, they collected so, their account numbers. The bribe was. Uh, <laughs> It was an incomplete transaction. <laughs> That's the bank's would say. That's the bank's would say. I think the delay in the completion is now. Uh, is that is it? Yes. Yeah, so, mm. You know, it's so unfortunate. So, despite the cash crunch, you know, some, some unscrupulous politicians are using the other way to. Yes. Cheat and maybe they will tell them the, it's the bank, it's not me. The money has moved from my account, but it's again. <laughs> but uh, say now one of my friends said that uh, majority of people that can be hoodwinked into this are the women. Uh, Is it true? I seriously so because don't all this <laughs> spaghetti, yeah. but they, they cook it for the men who don't ask where it is coming from. <laughs> they eat it. Exactly, so when you give one. The others will go back. Ah, they are sharing this yeah. two sp well, spaghetti. And two and yeah. Not even a full wrapper. Rapper has six pieces, right? Mm. In some places, in Kaduna and Kano, they share it into two. So three. In Hausa, we call it Palebiu. Mm. And you know, it's most um, unfortunate. I think maybe but it's a factor of um, illiteracy mm. and poverty. Unfortunately. That people will just change the world. They will be um, deliberately allow themselves to be shortened to spaghetti. You can't, if you are a family of uh, four. four, for instance, that's a meal for just two Just a lunch. Meal. Just a lunch. Without fish and uh, maggi. You, you understand. And that rapper is one four. They are sharing the most, the, the most substandard, you know, that maybe if you watch it, if you dip it inside water, you won't even recognize it. <laughs> and the, not even the full uh, So it's most uh, unfortunate. I hope that um, the Electoral Act uh, uh, election, election, election violated other people will take its course, particularly this Tamara. You know, they are cash crunch because you can't give money. Now you are even <laughs> anticipatory <laughs> yeah. bribe or giving spaghetti or noodles or. It's more unfortunate. I yeah. think what's important um, to note behind the drama uh, and everything is the fact that vote buying is a crime. If yeah. you are arrested, you can be jailed for it. It would not matter whether it's a pack of spaghetti yes. or it's a standard material that was given to you. Uh, those who didn't get it are still alive. Uh, so and more importantly, the giver and yes. the taker.
I think I should be caught from. <laughs> be I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. Absolutely. If yeah. you are giving a part maybe of why, spaghetti. Maybe, the, maybe that was why the transaction was truncated, so that uh, the evidence will not be available to, to, to indict them. But it is what it is. We want to thank you, Nuruddin Abdullah, for making it to the studio today. Um, uh, we hope we were able to brighten your day in the face of the postponement. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody wanted this election to come and exactly. go so, <laughs> for all. Exactly. so that we can get our lives back. Uh, but the nation is ours. We continue to endure uh, until next Saturday, hopefully. Thank you very much for making it to the studio.